Hey guys, I'm back with another long video. It's of my latest painting that's about my two pregnant friends. But they recently just had their baby only a couple of weeks ago. And I actually had an opportunity to hold their daughter, which was a great time. So during their pregnancy, I had this idea of making this painting where the goal of it for me was to make a scene of their home life of a small cherished moment that's actually natural and real to them. So my goal during the photo shoot was to avoid making it too cute or tacky or forced. So hopefully I was able to accomplish that. All right, let's get into the painting. When I start out a big canvas with multiple people on it, what I like to do is to divide the photo up into thirds using the grid method in Photoshop. And then I place those dots of the thirds on my canvas so I can know where stuff is compared to those separations. And I also take some measurements of how many inches down from the top of the canvas or the side of the canvas somebody's head starts. So I don't put the head in the wrong place. And I also measure how tall each person's head's supposed to be. So once I have the correct head size and the correct head placement, I can kind of intuit the rest from there and get it right. You're just seeing me fill in the basic values and color temperatures of her face as I seek to establish a feeling for the lighting that's on her and our characters. I'm not seeking to get the perfect drawing right away because I want to get the lighting first. And then as I keep working on it, I seek to get closer and closer to her likeness by adjusting the drawing. I'm particularly having trouble with her nose as I adjust it again and again. At this stage, as I work on our face, I begin to get worried if my skin tones are correct or not, because they're starting to feel very orange to me. I'm basically using cadmium orange and cadmium orange medium, sometimes out of the tube for a skin tone. And because this paint is the only colored paint we have down on the canvas so far, it exists in isolation without the context around it. So when we haven't painted the rest of the painting, we don't know what color temperature will be. The isolated element just feels wrong. And for that reason, I began to get worried. But I tried to have faith and understand that later on, as we put down more and more warm tones in the rest of the painting, it will create a context for the face and that the face will feel correct in comparison to the rest of the scene. Hair is a particularly challenging area for me. I believe that painting hair has a lot to do with your ability to do shape design and to make the shapes flow in a way that makes sense to gravity, to how the hair works, but also create these nice sexy shapes that are attractive. Since shape design is kind of an intuitive area of painting that I don't believe can be taught in any direct way because it's something you have to get a feel for, I find that to actually be my weakest area I'm a very logical person and I want there to be rules that make sense. Like for edges, when you're working in a shadow area, there's going to be soft edges. Things that are light against dark are going to have hard edges. These are rules that help me make sense of things. But when it comes to shape design, there's just no rules. You just have to intuit it and I find that very challenging. One of the most fun areas to paint was the silk shirt. To show off silk, you have to make sure the material ends up looking reflective. And to do that, you get to push the highlights up as much as you can. And that's a lot of fun to do. As you put down some strong highlights on a form, it instantly gives it that 3D form that pops it right out of the screen. I really enjoyed doing that. The shirt is black and it has some orange light falling on it. So what do you get when you mix black with orange? You get green, so that's why the black silk shirt ends up looking green in the painting. I really look forward to painting hands in my portrait. I consider hands to kind of be a secondary portrait within your portrait, as they can have so much personality and tell so much of the story. I'm focusing here on showing off the structure and the bones underneath the skin. I love how the anatomy in the knuckles tells the story of the tension that exists in her hand as she holds the cup. Painting little jewelry is a great exercise in indication. 
You want it to feel like metal, and to do that, you have to push the darks as dark as you can and contrast it with the really bright highlights that jewelry tends to capture. Ellipses are a nightmare. They have to be extremely precise to look correct, and anytime you get even a little bit of that curve wrong, people can feel it. So I find them particularly challenging. It's time to paint my friend's face. And as I do it, I discover that my underpainting, the eyes and the forehead were set a little bit too high. So I painted a lot lower. But in that process, I for some reason lose sight of the size that his face should be and I paint it way too small. So now I've repainted it significantly bigger and you see me finalizing the face that's the correct size now. I'm seeking to paint the jaw and the structure of the face first before painting the mouth on it. I want to make sure that the head feels right and that we can feel the skull underneath the skin before I commit myself to painting the specifics of each feature. For some reason I got it in my brain that my friend's head is a lot smaller than it is. So I keep being wrong and I keep having to adjust the face bigger and bigger. So you see me adding to the shadow side and pushing that hair back to give him more size. Maybe it's just shocking how much bigger his head is compared to his wife's head. Now that I finally built up the skull to a correct size, I'm ready to paint the features as specifically and accurately as I can in order to build a likeness of my friend. We're starting to build the likeness and starting to see him in there a little bit, but it still feels like this is some sort of malnourished version of him. So I'm adding little bits of mass everywhere that I can, especially the shadow side. I had to be very careful not to overstate the curvature and the shapes on the lips so that it doesn't become cartoony or stylized. Now that we're done with both portraits, it's time to paint his hand resting on the belly. I found that this hand is quite subtle and if you want it to stay in the shadow, you can't show off too much anatomy, so you gotta keep the values close together. Notice that I painted his shoulder a lot smaller than my indication in the underpainting. For some reason, I didn't trust the underpainting even though it was correct. I think the reason why is because I painted the book actually too small and when I compared where the shoulder is to the end of the book it was like this in the photo but what I didn't know was that I painted my book too small so his shoulder needs to expand further from the book. Painting that book too small led me to painting that shoulder too tiny and that in turn led to an arm that's entirely too small. So now I've caught the mistake and you can see me repainting the arm significantly bigger to give my friend the tallness that he actually has. Perhaps I subconsciously can't believe how tall he is and want him to be shorter. This new huge arm may have given him the correct height, but it also made him look very buff. But I guess you gotta give compliments to your friends and make them feel better, so no regrets. Our two main characters are finally done, so now we just have the background left to do, which is not as exciting, but you gotta do it. I'm laying in the shapes of the bedding, which it's my responsibility as the artist to adjust the shapes and the folds to be more attractive and to have a sense of direction and purpose. I'm not entirely certain that I accomplished that. I particularly don't like the two repeating folds that you can see there and there's too many details and folds in the darker part under his arm. I just don't think this is a good simplification. The next day when I saw what I did the previous night, I felt like the best thing to do is to try and wipe it down with the rag to destroy all the useless folds and information that I put in in order to simplify the scene more and have a chance at repainting it in a better, more intelligently designed way. Here you can see me using a bristle brush to break down the folds that I find particularly offensive. Now starts the repainting process. 
I'm looking at my photo and I'm thinking shape design and simplification. So I'm taking out as many of the folds that I see in my photo as I can and instead creating simplified areas that have no detail. I'm also wanting to design my folds in a way that shows the action of the drapery. Where is it being pulled, for example, by that cup that's being pressed down into it? I want the folds to tell us that story. Now that the bed sheets are done, it's time to paint the plate that's full of sweet snacks. Here we have a banana from my fridge, and we have some desserts that my girlfriend and I got in Russia. It's some apple cake of some sort and some marmalades. So you can see that the marmalades, they have a slight transparency. And you can see the light going through the, that top one and creating that warm, warm shadow that I really like. I'm very glad for this part of the painting because this plate under the warm light still holds up its colors of the yellow banana, the orangish cakes and the red marmalades. And I feel like this little area helps the painting feel less monochrome because pretty much everything else we've painted so far other than this has been some shade of orange. I want the cakes to come forward as they're one of the things closest to us in the scene. So I use a lot of palette knife. Palette knife is a stressful tool for me to use. You can see me using it now in real time. I feel like I don't control the paint as well, but the more I try and the more I practice with it, the more I cherish the effects that you can get. It gives you these types of strokes where they have mixed colors all within one stroke. And it really helped me on the front of the cake to give it a texture that I don't think I could get with a brush. As I'm modeling these cakes, I'm trying to be mindful of distance. So with my edge work, I want to accomplish a feeling that the cakes in the back recede and the cakes in the front come forward at us. For example, in the shadow under the banana, the cake has quite a soft edge as it merges into that shadow. Now here comes the fun part. I'm about to paint some writing that was on this plate that was done in a beautiful calligraphy. And at first I was debating whether I should include this calligraphy in my painting or not, because I was afraid that perhaps if I include it, the plate will end up looking too busy or distracting, or maybe that it would have a photographic feeling to it. But I'm happy I did it because in the end, I think it looks decently painterly. If you're doing this wet into wet, like I'm doing it here, you gotta be really careful because you only have one shot at each letter. The more you mess with the paint, you're gonna lose that fresh brush mark that you kind of need to get this to work well. So I did this very slowly in a very Zen manner, trying not to make any mistakes. Another very reasonable approach is to paint patterns or writing onto things once they're dry. So you would first paint it without the patterns or the writing, and then you'd paint wet onto dry. That would be easy and you can erase any mistakes easier with your Gamsol, but you lose that wet into wet brush mark making. It's time to paint the picture frame that holds a photo of their two dogs, Balto and Elsa. Balto, for anyone that know him, is probably the nicest dog anyone has met and I had the pleasure of babysitting him a couple of times. The challenge of this though is that the photo has a strong tilt away from us, so you have to kind of mind that in your drawing. I'm applying a palette knife here, a big stroke that it will be very thick against the flatness of the body of the lamp. The reason why is just because it's the lightest part of the painting and it's a good opportunity to have a contrast of texture between flat and thick. The body of the lamp is made from this dark transparent glass or plastic. And the key to accomplishing this transparency is to push the contrasts of the darks, of the deep darks, 
and the light reflections. We covered the entire canvas and we could call this painting finished, but I like to take this opportunity to find what's wrong. I think her arm that's holding the T is much too thin, and I think that white section in the background is too bright and calls too much attention, so we need to glaze that down, as well as the photos of the dog, which I think is too bright as well. Let's start with the biggest problem, which is how thin her arm is. It looked quite skeletal. So here's just me making it thicker on both the bottom and the top. And I'm also adjusting the color temperature to be a little more orange to suit the rest of the painting. This made the other arm feel too thin as well. So I made that thicker and a friend of mine criticized the fold on the bed sheet, So I changed that. I felt that Balto looked like a teddy bear and not a real dog because his face was painted too big, so painted it smaller. I'm applying my final glaze to that white area that was too bright. I'm using some Indian yellow and transparent yellow oxide. I'm trying to make it thicker towards the bottom as it moves away from the light. I also glazed the dogs, but you don't have to see that. Here's the finished, varnished, and signed piece. This painting for me was about storytelling and narrative. Like I said in the introduction, my focus here was to create a natural moment that's kind of bordering on being cute, but doesn't cross that line into being tacky. So please let me know in the comments if this scene feels cheesy to you or not, because it would really help me learn for my next scenes. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. You know I'm always working on new paintings, so there's going to be a lot more of these coming up in the future. If you like these, hit subscribe, and if you think any of your friends would enjoy these too, please share with them as well. Thanks guys.